Happy All Souls Day or All Saints Day or Happy Halloween. Take your pick. Missing your dearly departed? Did you light a candle in honor of a loved one's memory? Create a home altar, burn some incense, or leave an offering of goodies with a bottle of the departed's favorite drink. We'd been secretly judging the cuteness of their costumes all night, but we were finally weary of the ringing doorbell and the trick-or-treat screams. We cozied up with friends around the fireplace, one chilly Halloween Eve with hors d'oeuvres and glasses of wine in hand. After grueling hours of distributing treats to a parade of neighborhood kids, as the crackling flames of the fire emitted warmth as we honored those who'd gone on before us, it brought up nostalgic memories and some chuckles. Feeling their nearness, we were filled with loving thoughts of those who've crossed over to the next dimension. After all, it was Halloween, the season where the veil between the living and the dead is its thinnest. A grim reminder, perhaps, that we are all just passing through in this life. My mom and dad both passed away in November, too. They died years apart, but both in the same month. Each year, we celebrate the transitions of our loved ones together on All Saints Day and All Souls Day and in November, and maybe it's because it's smoother and easier for souls crossing over during this particular month. Maybe we can experience spirits from the other world more easily on these days. It's sometimes hard to chalk everything up to coincidence. I told her, when I am thinking of my mother, she often visits me in my dreams as if I summoned a genie bottle. She'd tinker in my room and fuss over things. Hey mom, will you please stop fussing and sit here next to me, I'd ask. Then she walked towards me and sat down with me. We would catch up about everything under the sun, heaven, hell, and in between. The moment I wake up, she'd be gone, our conversation erased from my mind. Although I could swear she was in the room with me just a few seconds ago, I could still smell her presence. Every time I wear mom's jewelries, I always lose a pair. My sissy Connie spoke up. Funny though, I always find the other pair in a week or two in the most conspicuous spot in the house. How could I have missed it? Mom always loved playing the old switcheroo game on me. That's probably spookier now that you're sober. We had a laugh and Connie poured herself some more Martinelli's sparkling apple juice. She's proud of her sobriety and tolerated the rest of us winos. Whether you get a dream apparition or electronic trick or treats from beyond, I usually call these nudges from heaven. It used to be that All Saints Day, November 1st, was the biggest day on the Filipino's calendar. I remember it was a joy to visit the cemetery. The graveyard was always super crowded. People brought tons of foods and booze while they barbecued on location, creating a mixture of aromas swirling around the area. Some families would pitch a tent and some even slept by the headstones of their loved ones to keep the deceased company. While the more faithful chant the rosary all night long or prayed the novena intermittently, others would bring in their boom box and play their music way too loud. Outsiders would never know they were visiting a cemetery. It felt more like a carnival. You'd think everyone was celebrating a town fiesta. It wasn't unusual to see people playing card games or mahjong to whiling the night away during their vigil. For us, there's been a tradition all over our province to come home to pay homage to the departed on these holidays. But these things are changing. It depends on who's in office in your area. Our mayor recently banned alcohol and gambling at the cemeteries to keep the holidays solemn. Not surprisingly, this tapered off visiting crowds that usually flocked to the potter's field during the holidays. There are always those who will not be dissuaded. Now they organize Zumba dances and movie nights during the long four-day holiday weekend anyway. Depending on the churchyard, your dearly departed can afford, and of course, on your family's tastes and budget. 
If you are still above ground and you think you'd like to have a lot of visitors in the afterlife, you might want to consider which cemetery. Because even in death, there are the haves and their have-nots. More expensive boneyards might not be to the liking of your departed, but it's really more about the living. On the yearly pilgrimage to your honored loved ones who doesn't want bragging rights about their cemetery destination, who doesn't want to say, we're headed to Hollywood Hills pavilions, instead of, you know, the cemetery behind the cockfighting pit, the high-end cemeteries often look down their noses at movie night shown against the mausoleums or a spontaneous Zumba dance rounds on the graves of strangers. But the more modern memorial parks set up pavilions fully equipped for these activities, as well as all-day karaoke or DJs with modest but clean comfort rooms. It makes it easier for guests to rest from the scorching sun have meals, and replenish their refreshments. They might be designed to be more serious and minimize raging parties. Still, the bathrooms are clean. These might only be a secondary consideration for the dead. But as for me, I want my final resting place to be in a graveyard that has a balance of fun and clean restrooms for my visitors. After all, who doesn't like visitors? According to the Catholic Church, my understanding of the difference between November 1st and 2nd goes something like this. On the one hand, All Saints Day commemorates those who are baptized and are in heaven. It's like Dia de los Muertos in Mexico that falls on the same day. It's a colorful celebration. This shouldn't be surprising. We both have direct ties to Spanish conquerors and galleon trade. We got Magellan and they got Cortez. On the other hand, there's All Souls Day that celebrates the unbaptized heathens, the yet to be penitent who are still stuck in purgatory. Maybe they've got work they need to do there, like spiritual pilots or sit-ups. Considering the hierarchy among the dead, they probably need our prayers most of all. It's comforting to know that the rat race doesn't end. Even when you're dead, there are the haves and have-nots. Where All Saints Day and All Souls Day are concerned, it's the same as with most cultures. There are some people who are more observant than others. For me, I'm flexible. That's our long weekend of hanging out with family and friends at the beach. If, of course, we're not headed to the local necropolis for an obligatory visit to our long lamented dead. And of course, the COVID era has had its effect on the entire system too. And not just by reducing the celebrants and putting them on the list of those being celebrated. These days, the deceased are cremated and buried within three days by law. The memorial parks are closed or in most cases and visitors are limited. Most days can enter the graveyard without proof of vaccination. Ironically, during the holidays, the graveyard is closed to avoid the transmission of COVID and other variants. So during the holidays, we've got to settle on digital funerals and virtual novenas over Zoom. Traditional funerals, long wakes, and personal goodbyes are a thing of the past, at least for now anyway. It's very tough for people in my culture to find closure under these circumstances. In years to come, I think it will only make our traditional visits to the cemetery even more essential. For me, this year's long holiday weekend will be thinking of the dearly departed, celebrating their lives and hours here on the beach with my doggies and my favorite cocktail. So don't forget to light the candle, burn some incense for them, or raise a toast, because if you don't remember, the veil is thin. They might might just visit you in your dreams as a gentle reminder. Salute to you, Mom, Dad, and Randy. I will keep the flame alive in my heart until the next visit.